Hi guys, so welcome back. And we are straight into the game, Lauder. Yeah. This is the Dr. Pepper also tournament. Next match between Garrix and Disco Pumper, we're jumping into the game because they already started. And... Yeah, Disco Pumper is already pumping in some uh, good quality damage. I think Disco Pumper is the druid, right? Mm, and Garrix sure. is the warrior. We'll know in a few seconds who is who. But was there a wild growth? Yeah, there was uh, a wild growth. Yeah. I think <laughs> it's like Wild Wild Rock Innervate Emperor. The I standard so. druid starts. Yeah, yeah. That's a really. Well, that's, that's something that can happen. That's you're... like the druid. <laughs> Professional way to win at Hearthstone. It's still not looking bad for the warrior though. Um, it's like turn six is nothing really exciting. It's the usual thing. So Palti Shredder and Hero Power. The, the warrior has the weapon to deal with the stage one of the Palti Shredder, and has a perfect draw for and perfect board control. I mean. Um, of going out against Druid. Yeah, yeah. Right? I really like that because, first of all, you put two minions on board, which has, uh, which Druid has to deal with it, and you draw a card. And also, the Palti Shredder spawns a Ancient Watcher, which is useless. Well, no, it's, is useless. it's the best card. Like, yeah, actually, now it's really awesome there is, because you have there a is, keeper. Watcher is useless 90% of the time, 99% of the time, that, but there's one situation where Watcher is insane. Druid, when they have Keeper. Yeah, and this is, this is now. But will he use it? Now this is of the course. question. You have to use it here. But the question some is players, if... some hmm? players don't know that he can they, that they can do that. You know, like you mean, you mean Olsen, Olsen? Yeah, like Olsen missed the rag silence, and some people joined the game when they uh, in the, in the moment when they even not suspecting that that was a deck. Sometimes, like sometime sometime back, there was an ancient water druid as an archetype. With ancient watchers and spellbreaker and double keepers, right? That was an actual deck. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was like a really aggressive deck back in the day where people didn't know how to build like aggro decks. I think I played something like that with like fell reavers, watchers, and all the good stuff. Like you play all the bad cards that have like a condition effect, and then you silence them to remove that condition. Look at that. See, he didn't use it. Maybe, not, maybe denying the draw is considered better. I never saw a player using the Shredder in the middle. I I, I wish some, somebody gets Flame Tongue to get punished. Like once you get you get punished or once, yeah, or Direwolf. Once you get once you get punished once, you'll always do that. Trust me. Yeah. It happened to me too. I was like, ah, I just missed little because I didn't position it well. From now on, I'll never miss position again. That's true. But the, I almost left, never mind. But I really would like him to see the, to use the keeper on the ancient watcher. Like there was so much damage. Yeah. Oh, he it would have been lethal, I think, with the savage right now, or like, close. Rough, to. rough for one. Doctor Boom, perfect. Do easy. it. <laughs> easy. You clear the board and play Doctor Boom. Yeah, that's kind of easy. How to druid? <laughs> and then. Brawl gets in and Ancient Water survives. And then you top the keeper. Yeah, that's kind of okay. <laughs> it's better than a single boombot living. But now the question is do you want to overextend? Maybe what about. No, you have not enough. You don't have, don't have enough pressure. But what about Shadow Extremis and Swipe? Um, That might actually be better. If it ensures you lethal with Savage or next turn, it's better than playing Boom because if he has Brawl, you can still play yeah. Boom. Yeah, there is one exactly. card that he can have that can uh, wreck you up, and that's Baron Geddon. Isn't and... it exactly wrecking? Well, now. You still win with the combo. He needs to top the Force of Nature, and some people don't even run two Force of Natures. That was like one of the worst ones, but now playing Dr. Boom, you still guarantee yourself a really good board spot because yeah. Gideon is constantly dealing damage to the Warrior. You are, damage the, you are dealing damage to the Warrior, so at some point you're gonna kill him easy. 
Mm -hmm. I agree. And the Wild Grove on turn 9 is the best draw you can get. It's like the best. Yes. Well, the Shield Slam Shield Block is really great in this situation because you deal with the board and still keep the Baron Geddon, but the bro will be useless till the end of the game. Like, almost useless, I would say. Well, it depends. Anything can happen. You can have Sylvanas next turn for some really cool Full plays. damage to the Baron Geddon. Is so first... Legal? Wait. Four and... No. Seven. seven. So wild draw first. Of course. Is there any little draw? Druid of the Claw? Mm, that's eight. It's eight. Force would be pretty good. Oh, look. Oh, Druid, Druid of the Claw. <laughs> well, I guess you swipe and hero power and that's it. Yep. And then you deal nine next turn. So a Belcher is needed. He will all his face. Oh, you're right. No, right, right, right. It's turn nine. Like, there's no other play than Alex in your own face here. Mm -hmm. It's like really good because you play around combo and you put an 8 8 on the board. Oh! Oh! 50 50, 50 boys. You go for it. Senor del Fuego. As Admirable says. What is better here? Hitting the Alex or hitting the face? I think hitting the face is more important. I think both are good. Now, like, what do you do? Sylvanas or Kantarag? Or Brawl? Brawl is probably bad. Kantarag is 33% and Sylvanas... I guess risky. you should go Sylvanas armor up and Shield Slam execute. What do you think of Sylvanas armor up Shield Slam in the Watcher? Mm. It's the more risky play, but it's like the more rewarding play. Well, you have to armor up, that's for sure. You don't want to die the combo outright. Hmm. I, I like the Shilvana Shield Slam execute. You eliminate the rack threat, you eliminate the combo threat, and you eliminate the RNG basically. And you still have a Sylvanas on board for the following turns while you have the Brawl. Yeah, so and... now the Brawl will become useful. Yeah, the Brawl will become useful. Okay, that's the good play. Like, Shield Slamming the Watcher, as I first said, is really risky, and I don't think you want to do that. Mm -hmm. Especially but... when he just can spawn other minions during his turn, and that's it. You know what card that was useless all the game? The Ancient Watcher, because he didn't silence it at that turn. Yeah. That's now Watcher it... might be good because of the Brawl. Mm. I would say that he would have won the game if he would, if he would silence the Watcher. Probably. Uh, I think you insta Brawl, right? You don't need to trade. You want the Bell yeah. if he yeah, survives. Yeah, yeah. You just go roll here. The best outcome would be Sylvana surviving, probably. Oh, why? I, just, why? I don't like what? that. Yeah, uh, now yeah. I hope the slime survives so he gets punished. Why would you trade that? I, I didn't get it. There, there's like almost no reason. Well, he gets the best one now in this scenario. <laughs> Esports. So you. Armor up, armor, armoring up doesn't make anything. So if you play Harrison Jones now. You have 9 damage next turn, so if you top deck a second crew Taskmaster, you win the game. Uh, I like armoring up. Uh, it doesn't do anything on spot, but it's, if, you, if your opponent doesn't have combo the next turn, and you know he has one piece because he, he doesn't play for a lot of time, you can armor up again next turn and deny the combo. If you play Harrison, you need again 2 more turns with armoring up or something like Shield Maiden. Well, okay, yeah, you're, you're right here. Um, Druid of the Claw Charge Face is like the play here. You have to push your opponent into some risky play. And that will give you like way more time to draw into something like Force of Nature. Hmm. I don't think you're savage, sure. I don't think so either. Shield Maiden like ends the game instantly. Death Spite. No, that's not it. But I like Rome Armor up. Gromash armor up is okay. He's little next turn with Rog. So he needs Force of Nature or Bust. I don't think there's anything else. I don't think so either. Do we see? This Panther doesn't draw the Force of Nature. You can and use game... one Savage Roar now. Uh Yeah. But you know you're dead to Rog. So Warrior wins against a Wild Growth Druid. A Wild Growth Innervate Emperor Druid. Yeah. 
That's that, like even better. That was, um, I would say, a rare sight. Well, it happened because of the Shredder giving Watcher and then him not using the Watcher at yeah. full potential. If he would just keep her the, the Watcher, I think he would just had easy game. It would have made one more card draw for the Warrior, but when you gain a 4-5 minion, that's actually the same. It's like you gain a card too. It's so, even better, actually. Yeah, and you gain 4 mana. Actually, and, 2 mana. And we but, saw that Warrior had all the cards he needed anyways, like one more card draw wouldn't do anything. Yeah. And when you see your opponent has like six cards in the hand, one more card isn't gonna do that big of a difference. True. So True. that was a really sketchy game. So you see, once one small RNG not played perfectly can uh, lose the game. I guess the RNG was um, was really good for him, but he just didn't use the. Uh, yeah, yeah, the he output, didn't use the potential. Yeah, the potential was wasted. And we see mechanical mage. I would guess so, but most uh, like some people are now uh, using also unstable portals in mech mages. You see so many options because of the new flame waker, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. Is it flame waker or flame walker? Waker. Waker. Okay, I always oh that that hand is really bad for the mech mage player. Well, at least you know we have the end game, <laughs> which is required to win anyway. Like it's either rushing through, or just. Finishing the game with Antonidas, and you have the Antonidas in your hand, so it's not so bad. You just have to get like free spell parts. The real question is, what is a Belcher doing in the Mech Mage deck? I was wondering that <laughs> about that, and um, I have no idea. It's good that we see another Green Patron, which is like a really high skilled deck. So let's see how he manages to do with it. I think he's Disco, Disco Pampor on the Green Patron World Gear, right? Mm. Wait, the Warrior won first, so Garrix, yes, Garrix was the Warrior, so yeah, Disco Pampor is at the Green Patron now. Okay. Actually, the, the bad draws didn't even matter. He's running some sort of combination between Mech Mage and Midrange Mage that seems to work because the Warrior drew really poorly in the early game and had no answer. Well, he had the Fairy War X, but it was just not usable at all because uh, the Mech Mage didn't have any other game. So that's the reason it just paid off. Do you like trading there? Mm, no, to be honest. You I lose just five damage. Face. Yeah, I would just want to face, kill it to four. Killing it to four is like, eh. I don't know. Maybe going face was better. But sometimes trading is better because the warrior can have so many ways to buff their monsters and use them efficiently. But now you're playing to execute and if you lose your 5-2 just like that, it's not that great either. If he uses Taskmasters or Inner Rage on his 2-4 to trade with a minion, I'm, I'm okay with that, to be honest. Like, you know what he's doing then? He, he denies the options of combo with Grim Patron, that's, that's, that's okay for me. Hmm. I think you just... Yeah, I would just slam the Goblin Blast Mage here, without sacrificing it. Yeah, like... and if you need to Frostbolt, you Frostbolt, if you need to ping, you ping. Yeah. I'm not sure if I really like that play. Yeah, I don't like it at all. They're like really small decisions that if you sum them up, they actually matter. <laughs> wow, playing Emperor there is like so risky. It's so slow. But that's the only way you can win this game. If you do that. Unfortunately, he used one of the 14 Berserkers. Now the Mechanical Mage player just drops Dr. Boom, smashes that face button. Well, he will trade for the Emperor with the Blast Mage, I guess. I wouldn't trade there. But he was doing that before, so I guess he will do that again. He has a Fireball in his hand. I, I, I'm guessing that he would not trade it if he would have a Fireball in his hand. I wouldn't trade it anyways, because you threaten the fireball, like they have to play around that. I don't really know. He lo he lost so much damage this game trading. Yeah. Sometimes you just need to not trade and hit that face. Maybe tra trading is not that bad, but I'm not really sure. So we now... Wait, wait, why would you pattern here? No, 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 no. Because you have Krotos Master. And you kill the, you get through the Belcher. It's, it's, a, it's a good play. Okay, yeah, you're right. You make a full board of patrons. Unless so the bombs are really lucky. 
Yeah, the bomb needs to hit the Warsong or face. And well, first of all, you clear the mech warper. Then you clear the first bomb, I guess. With the new patron, yes. And now, Lothar, wouldn't you like having five more damage? And the yep. five four? Of course I would. Like, okay. Would... He, he could oh, have... look at that. Additional patron. And now you lose Dr. Boom too. Yep. That's GG. The That's patron... Why, uh... Uh... Yeah, please continue. Uh, the patron player played really well this game. I really liked mm -hmm. the way he mm -hmm. hit, hit the turns. Yeah, I agree completely here. The problem was the uh, the fact that Mechmage wasn't aggressive at all. He traded two times, one in the Nomish Inventor and once in uh, the yeah. Emperor. And but that even damage a fireball, was... Even the Fireball would, wouldn't make any difference now. Yeah. Now he's in a really bad spot. Slam will just tear him up. Slam Whirlwind. Warax. Yeah, GG. Floating Berserker on board. Is this Whirlwind? lethal? Uh, it should be. Like, y you can get... So much battle damage. rage first, so I don't see a point in slamming that, but okay. I like oh never mind. GG What? He <laughs> wants to get in I have no idea. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you draw, you just play everything. Uh this might cause you to lose big time because of animations. There's an inner rage and battle rage. That's like way more than lethal. So inner rage, one patron. Attack with the patrons. What? Oh, what? Please. He had lethal. Yeah, he had way over lethal. Yeah. Well, he will win anyway, but uh, he had lethal, yeah. That's that was really that's... close to a perfect Patron game. Really close. Doesn't really matter. He still managed so to win. 1-1 one, one now. Right? Yes. 1-1. One, one. The Patron Warrior is out of the way. And now we'll see one new deck from... No, no. It's Druid versus the Mech Mage. Oh, yeah, right. Wait. Druid? Oh, yeah, right. Yes. It's Druid versus the Mech Mage. So... Yeah. We're not so sure. The Mech Mage is still gonna be favored. Uh, if he plays Mirror Entities, we don't know that. He plays Belchers. Maybe he denied himself the Mad Scientist with um, with Mirror Entities. That's a really bad idea. Yeah, it is. But we didn't see any of those. Well, that's a good Mech Mage hand. The Belcher looks so bad in that deck. I, I don't know. Yeah, you're always mulligan that way. Like, there's no way. I personally don't think you have a reason to play Belchry in Mechanical Mage. It's really defensive. I don't like it at all. Oh, look at that, Wild Grove from turn 2. Being the Mech Mage, do you coin Mech Warper and go for the Valley game? Well, it can win you the game. But to be honest, I, I'm not sure if I would... Maybe I would, I would just wait and not play anything in 1. I like this because if they rough it, you still have a 2-drop, you have the Snow Chugger, and then you have the 3-drop, and then you have Anoyatron. So yeah, that's okay. like the worst case right. scenario. Yeah. He needs to have like Wild Growth and then Innervate Wrath to put you in a, in a bad spot. What about spamming now 2 minions instead of 1? You gain more mana because of that. It's the same damage. You gain more mana, but you can gain the mana next turn anyways. And it fits better into the curve, you can fit 1 with the Frostbolt. Do you Frostbolt that? Uh, with an Aeotron? I don't think so, you just play two minions. You can Frostbolt and trade the 3-4 in what he gets. Nah, I don't like that at all. <laughs> I would just play two minions and go face. Uh, I don't know. In, in this spot, you are in a spot where you can afford to trade. I don't think playing the Snow Chugger before was right. He probably mm. had to kill that, because if he gets Mana Wrath or whatever the other guy is called, he could still kill it. But if he gets Doomsayer, he already played the Snow Chugger. Well, he decides to sacrifice the Mech Warper to not play into Swipe. Ah. Uh. Well, that's, that, that will work for him, but um, to be honest, I didn't like that at all. 
Yeah, probably just going for full face was better in the end. Second, no, that's first ref, right? Yeah, that's first ref. It's really important. And now you have to use a frostbolt to uh, freeze the minion. Do you? I will yeah. have done that. Because next turn, uh, you can trade whatever your minions to the... Well, you can. You don't need to trade, I would guess. Like, you go face anyway. Hmm. So kill this chugger. Next turn, you can't play Belcher. Well, you... Uh, Belcher seems wrong. Like, yeah. I wish he had me or entities. Like, the the whole purpose of Magmage is to be Druid. And how do you be Druid near entity? Like, oh, you cut the yeah. best card for the, your best matchup. And Mad Scientist, which is one of the best cards in the game. And also, Belcher is really weak as a 10-5 play. Because of, it has taunt. Like, it, because of it, it has taunt, it's at the first line. So, a Neutron is not protecting your Belcher. If that would have been, let's say, what's our best? Dr Loaded, let's say, Loaded, right? Yeah. That would mean... That would, he would need to trade, and then, you, then yeah. you go like Party Shredder and ping. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I think I... Continue. You have to play the Palter Shutter here because the Belcher is still useless. Yeah. Again, he plays it on the right. That, that somehow triggers me, I don't know why. I do that mistake sometimes myself when I play really fast. But it's like correct to play it in the middle usually. Well, it won't make a difference right now. Because yes, right now it will have, not. Have taunt. Unless so... he like decides to swipe before trading. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I can see a reason for Belcher. If you decide to play all your early game stuff and then hit the face and only the face, Belcher can protect the early game stuff. Well, the same but... reason you play Anoetrons in this deck, but... Yeah, but the it's... problem is that we, we saw Gerix trading a lot with mm -hmm, this deck. Mm -hmm. And you have Anoetrons, as you said. Like, I, I don't think Belchers are the meta requirement that you want in this type of uh, mechanical mage. And I think Belgers are going to be his demise. If he had uh, secrets and entities, uh, secrets and scientists, he would have probably won the series and advanced even further in the Dr. Pepper All Star tournament. Well, in this situation, I would actually like to swipe, to be honest. You kill one, two creatures with your hero power and the swipe. So that's did kind you, of okay. Did you see the Clockwork Gnome? No, I didn't. Maybe he doesn't have that either. Well, he, he has Antonidas for those. Maybe he runs Antonidas for, for Frostbolts only. That would be pretty and wrong. He has unstable portals for Antonidas too. I don't think that's like a reliable combo. You need Antonidas spare part on turn 8 usually. He, he took away the best parts of me Mechanical Mage. And he replaced them with something really sketchy. I don't really know what to say. Swipe is efficient here, though. He has a really good curve with the Shade of Naxxramas. Yep. And he still has one taunt on the board. And he still have it, because you have to ping the Ancient of Law next turn. Is this lethal with the combo? It should be. It's like... No, 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 it's not. It's no, not. it's not anymore. Um, still really close, like 23, I think. 3, 5, 19, 20, 22. 22, okay. Do you keep her off the groove and just standard rid of the claw here? Hit the face with everything you have? Mm, well, double fireball is not lethal, so you just go face. Yes. Because well, you I can... Guess... He can ping the sludge and go face with the party shredder and play double fireballs. So there's no way he can kill you. So I would just go the root of the claw, big game hunter hero power or just keeper and go with everything face. I, I think keeper is better. No wait, big game hunter is better because keeper can be traded with uh, the party shredder. 
What do you think of Harrison Jones? Yeah, Harrison Jones is also great. Oh, he goes for the taunt. Yeah, that's the play I said first. I, li okay. I like his play. It, it, it's good, it protects your board. I don't think you need to really charge it. Of course, charging it is nice, but taunting it is like blocking in some way. Oh, no, those, those were quite awful. This should be lethal. That's 14, 16, 18, 22, 26, 27, 29. Yes, and we have a winner. Disco Pumper takes the series from 0 1 to 2 1 and shows his Druid's dominance. Curse. <laughs> Medrange Druid's Curse. He punished the Belcher Mag Mage deck in, in the Conquest format, where if you have yeah. like a deck with some problems, it will just lose you the series. Yeah, that's true. Like, um, we didn't see any kind of combos for the Antonidas apart from Frostbolt and Unstable. Oh yeah, Tinker Town. But uh, maybe he runs only one because you need to cut something to add Unstable portals and all that. Uh... Belchers, no Clockwork Gnomes. We didn't see Fireballs either, but I guess he's playing that. I I don't know what he's playing. We, we can, if you see Belcher in a Magmage deck. You can expect anything from that. Yeah, that's true. So that's 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 it. That's the match. Um, we'll be jumping for a break now, and we'll see who will be playing the next game after the break.